Everybody knows individuals that have questions. We all know individuals that have questions about Judaism, about mysticism, about, about uh, spirituality. We all, we all know people like that. Some of those people are us, me, myself. I'm talking. We all have questions. But then we also know that there are people that have questions and people that have questions. There's two different groups of people that have questions. right? There are those, like it says... <clears throat> Harav HaKadosh Mirudzmin He says, there are those He says, Kishama'aminim bechaste Hashem Those that believe in the goodness and greatness of Hashem Itbarach of, of God They don't have any questions Those that don't believe in the greatness of God They have all the answers Why? Because those that have questions But they believe in Hashem when we believe in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's great to have questions. As I always say, you have questions, Judaism is not afraid. Hashem is not afraid, the Torah is not afraid. Ask as many questions as you want. You will receive answers. But then, that's only if you want answers. There are those that ask questions only to what? Only to have questions. Because their questions are their answers. I've literally have had people so many times. I love it when it happens because I know it's coming. I had so many times people go, Rabbi, <laughs> tell me something. Nah, nah. You know, I love it. Like, seriously, tell me something. I have, I have a question. Why? It's something that starts with why or how. Do you really believe that this? So I always like, do you really want me to answer that? Or are, you, are we okay if I just walk away now? Because like, I don't know if you really want an answer or not. And it, ha- it has happened so many different times where I've answered. Like, do you believe in this? And I go, yes, because it goes, no, it's not really true. So I got a guy. So <laughs> I don't understand. Why are you wasting my time? <laughs> Why are you even asking a question? <laughs> I, eh, eh. Why not? You know? So there are those that have questions. There are those that have questions. They were Tanaim. People of the time of the Gemara and the Mishnah that had questions. Questions you don't even believe. There were Tanaim that the Gemara brings down. The Mishnah, that there's, it's, it's, it's brought down in Midrash Rabbah. That they asked, how do we know the Shekhinah after the destruction of the temple? One of the time asked, how do we know the Shekhinah is really on top of the temple? How do we know? Isn't that a question to ask? This is the temple ground. You're asking if the Shekhinah of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you're asking if the glory of God is still there? What he asked? What happened? All of a sudden it says Hashem opened his eyes and he saw the glow above the Kotel Amaravi, above the western wall. Where he said, ah, now I know that the Shekhinah is always here. God's presence is always here. Which is why we know. This is why people... Thousands upon thousands of people go pray at the Western Wall. Why? Because we know that even though the temple was destroyed, God's presence never left the Western Wall. It's a fact. We know that. And there was other questions that the Tanaim asked. And they received answers. And they received answers on the spot. So... Is it okay to ask questions? How come they got answers if they ask questions? Such questions that we would have thought that Tanaim, people of the whew, such great caliber should have these kind of questions. And obviously it was okay to have those questions because they were answered, they were well received. So what's the answer? I'll give it to you with a true story that happened not too long ago. Just to, just to make us understand what it means to believe and what it does for us when we actually believe. There was a couple that ha- they, they were trying to have children for many years. I think 19 or 20 years they were trying to have children. And Rahman al son, nothing. I mean, no one should ever know. It's, it's, it's very hard. They had gone to doctors. They had gone to, to, to different procedures. They had done everything possible. They couldn't have kids. Finally, 
the woman, the wife, goes to the husband, listen, as a last resort, you want to just stop, I don't want to make you suffer either, we don't want to suffer anymore, I want to go and get a bracha from whom? From none other than Harav Ovad Yosef, Zechat Sali Bracha. I want a blessing from Rav Ovad Yosef. Obviously the husband says, fine. I don't know, I don't think they lived in Eretz Israel to travel there to go to Rav Ovadia, they get an appointment to speak with him. Those of you that knew Rav Ovadia, Zechel Tzadik Bekadosh Livracha, such a holy man, such a, he would accept people with such, you know, Besever Panim Yafot, he literally was so, he, was, he, he saw himself as a part of people's pain. He sits with her and the husband and she cries and she tells her him her, her whole sob story. Come, kind of makes you think how they came up with all this time to sit and listen to so many people and still do everything they were doing. And she says, so I've come to you to get a blessing. I, need, I want children. So obviously he says, I will give you a bracha, bezrat Hashem. May Hashem help you. Give you all your, you know, she says, that's not why I came here. I want children. I want you to give me a guarantee that I'm going to have children. I didn't come here for a bracha. So Rabbi says, sweet, I'm, I'm sorry. It's not in my hands. How am I, what bracha can I, I, I can't give you a guarantee. How, how do you want me to tell you you're gonna, something's going to happen? She says, I don't know. She cries. She gets out on her knees. She says, I want a bracha. I want a guarantee that I'm going to have children. And he says, I, I, I don't know what am I, what am I supposed to tell you. I can't. I, she says, I'm not leaving. And she begins to sob. After a few minutes, Ravadi says, wait. Takes a piece of paper, writes something on the piece of paper, puts it in an envelope, seals it. And gives it to her and says, you do not open this envelope until the Brit Milah. Mazal tov. She is happy. She's beyond herself. The husband is happy. They're kissing his hand. But don't open it until the brief. So at least they knew the Rav of Adia is telling them they're going to have a boy. Nine months later, she gives birth to triplets. Triplets. On the day of the brief, everyone's waiting to see what's in the envelope. They open the envelope, open the letter, and it writes, Ve'ikaret shemam be'Israel, Avraham, Yitzchak, Ve'Yaakov. And you shall call their names Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. So besides the point that Rabbi Yosef, such a tzaddik, had such kuchot, I, 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 can't even, I can't even begin. I'll, I'll start crying right now. That's different. But to ask the question, what happened? Rabbi was saying, I can't do it. I, I, how am I supposed to do it? All of a sudden, where did this come from? Where did all of a sudden triplets come from? Not one, but three. Where did it come from? So Achamim tell us, when the emunah is there, when you truly believe in the koach of Kedushah and the koach, the power of the blessing, you believe in the tzaddikim, you believe in the Torah that they learn, you believe in the Torah that they teach, you believe in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, things change in a matter of a split second. When you get down on your knees and you have full emunah that no, I'm not taking no for an answer. Hashem could do this and you are the messenger. I want it. Then it becomes available. And that's how it became available. It, it wasn't that it was there and Rabbi Vadi didn't want to say it. He saw something that all of a sudden because of the kohot of the woman, of her tears, of the broken heart, that blessing became available. The opportunity became available. That's how it is. When you believe in something, you'll receive answers. If you don't believe in anything, if you don't believe it, don't expect answers. You'll have all the answers in your head. God is this, God is that. You have all the answers. What do you expect? You don't believe it. So nothing's going to make you feel better. We see the same situation with Esav. Esav and Yaakov wanted to get the blessings from their father. Yaakov went in first. We know the whole story, how he took, Jacob took the brachot from Esav. Esav goes to, Yaakov, uh, to Yitzchak Avinu, and he says, avi. 
Please give me a blessing also. He says, what can I do? Your brother came and get, got all the blessing. I got nothing to give. And Esau begins to cry and he sobs and he screams. All of a sudden, a flow of brachot, mishmanea aretz, <laughs> you know, from the oils, the fats of the earth, and from the dew of the heaven, and HaKadosh Baruch, and Yitzchak Avinu gives a blessing to Esav like you have no idea. You just said you don't have. What happened? Ah. Esav believed. He cried. And he said, you don't have, you have to. Hashem will give. When he cried with a broken heart, even for Esav Arasha, which meant so much hardship for Am Yisrael in history. But the gates of tears are never closed for anyone. Shem said, Esav cried, he wants blessings. Blessings he shall have because he believes in me. The Rasha, the wicked that he was, as wicked as he was, as he, was he believed in Hashem and the blessings. And even he received the blessings. So people have questions. We all have questions. But the question you have to ask yourself is, do you believe you will receive an answer? Or do you want to believe there is no answer? And you have all the answers. Baruch Adonai Amen ve'amen.